Hello everyone, welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12. I have made some changes to the Scramjet Aerospike, the Scram Spike, because it sorely needed them. Uh, after all, we last found out that if we removed the Scramjet, it got to orbit perfectly well as it was and didn't really seem to get any benefit from the Scramjet. And that is because the Scramjet is heavy and was only getting us to Mach 9.5-ish, so it covered the speeds between, say, Mach 4.5 and Mach 9.5. That's an important part, but it also guzzles quite a lot of hydrogen, and it was just better to get to Mach 4.5 and then light the aerospikes directly. Well, not better, about the same. But if there's no benefit to the scramjet, then there's no point, right? Uh, so I decided that we are going to I make use of a second mode that was already built into it, but wasn't working out quite mathematically right. The second mode uh, guzzles the hydrogen even faster, it has a lower specific impulse, but it does provide more thrust at higher altitudes, and so it was sort of optimized for that, and can potentially bring us past Mach 11. And the question is whether that's good enough especially to get us into an ISS-like orbit, International Space Station. So a 51.6 degree inclination and relatively high and be able to come back down. That's the goal of this. This is just a passenger transport. There's no cargo uh, hold on here. It is basically full of hydrogen, more or less up till there. So that's all hydrogen there. And then uh, sort of there's small oxygen tanks in the fairing area here and that's where the oxygen is stored and we've got less oxygen now because we're planning to use the aerospikes less than we used to and that will be a benefit especially as far as getting off of the runway is concerned uh, but yeah that's its layout it's just a passenger transport so it needs to get to a space station so we're gonna test if it uh, has any benefit. Well, obviously, if the scramjet can get us faster, then it'll have a benefit. And I'm not saying that scramjets can get things to Mach 11 efficiently. I don't know that. Uh, I'm just saying that in this case, it had better do it because otherwise it's useless. Uh, so, yeah, more or less. Anyway, with that being said, let's make sure atmospheric all pod is on and go. So these are just the jets. They have a ramjet mode. They're sort of like souped up versions of the SR-71 engines. Uh, or more like the jet ramjet mode on the Sabre engines. Its takeoff velocity actually is 160 meters per second, which is rough, but... At least we can do it within the runway area. So, that's a positive. And we're going to 45 degrees to match the inclination of the International Space Station, though we don't have the International Space Station here right now, uh, not in this save. So we'll just get into a similar orbit. So, And we're taking off from Cape Canaveral here, the shuttle landing facility. We stay below Mach 1 until we get to a decent height. And then pitch down to accelerate past Mach 1. Okay, we will switch to ramjet mode once we get to Mach 2.4. Okay, and that goes something like four times the amount of liquid hydrogen per second. But it is necessary. And I will ready smart ASS at this point. And turn off the flyby wire. Well, the atmospheric autopilot flyby wire. Past Mach 3. And we're relying on the ramjet to get us to Mach 4.5 to Mach 5 and 28 kilometers in altitude. Then it's a scramjet, and I'll get that display up. Mach 4. Alright, Mach 4.7. I think I'll try for Mach 4.75 before using the scramjet, which will use 4 to 5 times the liquid hydrogen per second that this mode does.
Uh, maybe we can get to 4.8. It's crawling though. Okay, I mainly just want to get more altitude, so I'll pitch up and open the big intake and activate the scramjet. Okay. And we have to watch out for heat, so I have to throttle down, switching off the jet ramjets and closing their intakes. Mach 6, Mach 7, Mach 8, well definitely acceleration is not going so well now, once we hit Mach 9 I'll switch modes. Okay, Mach 9 at 42 kilometers. Ah, that's not so good. It seems like we need Mach 9.5 or something for the second mode. It was not accelerating very well. So let's keep trying here. Our inclination is not quite enough. We should reduce that heading. Mach 9.5, but it's doing pretty well. We'll wait until we pick up positive vertical speed and then go back to the second mode. Okay, that's Mach 10 on the first mode. Now the second mode really guzzles a lot. We should throttle down actually. And pitch up more probably. Uh, maybe not that much. Okay, 45 kilometers. We're gonna run out of air pretty soon though. I don't know if that's ex this is exactly how I should be doing this. We'll see what we can do. Can't get a good read on the aerospike Delta V. Okay, well. Uh, things have just turned off. Okay, we don't have enough air apparently. And the fuel is unsettled for the air spikes. Well, none of the engines are working right now. Oh, there we go. There's the uh, air spikes. Okay, pitch up. We lost a bit. Okay, well, we can't go that high. And we're not going to have enough like this. Okay, let's try it again. Okay, always worried about the body flap there. Okay, jet ramjet change. Mach 4. Okay, looks like it's time to activate the scramjet. Big intake open. Scramjet on. Turning off the jets and closing their intakes. That overheating can really creep up quickly. Mach 7.5. Okay, I really don't want to be going down like that. Mach 8. Mach 9. Okay, you can hear the engines not doing quite as well now. Well, the engine, the scramjet really. Okay, switching to high power.
parity between the hydrogen and oxygen is when the hydrogen is at 309,000 liters. Okay, well, I don't want to choke again. Mach 11. Okay, well, I'm about to take that, I think. Yep. It's not... We're at 48 kilometers already. Let's go for it. Okay. Well, scramjet off, close intake. Okay, we'll throw all down there. We'll probably just establish an apoapsis and then circularize at that so we'll turn the engines off and relight them or relight one inclination 52 is a little bit more than what we wanted but it does demonstrate the point since we don't have a target, it wasn't quite easy to line up. I think that's good enough for now. Let's coast. Okay, finishing off the burn. I don't know why there's a secondary ignition sound, but... It's not the big problem here. I'm going to establish a new apoapsis that would be about the ISS height. Okay, well, that's a little bit past it. We have 500 meters per second left. Let's get to that apoapsis. 1.17% predicted residuals. We only have five ignitions on the air spikes right now. So I'll just switch off the outer too. I don't think we need those. Okay, ignition. All right, that's uh, ISS equivalent orbit four fifty-seven by four thirty-seven, uh, fifty-two point two. So extra inclination we have here, and we have four hundred thirty meters per second left. Now I'm going to turn on the fuel cell because we are draining electric charge right now. We will wait a day, so we'll see how the boil off is. But let me try and bring down our orbit now to the standard one and a half hour orbit that I use for re-entry testing. I'm going to use the two outer engines for this one. Just for ignition count sake. Oops, I went too far. Okay, that's a one and a half hour orbit. If we turn one of the engines on, we have 223 meters per second left, according to the engine. So let's see what happens after we time warp for a day. Okay, this would be the orbit on which we would like to return. And if we once again turn on an engine 227 so not too bad as far as boil off is concerned all right well i'm gonna try and have a kos script bring us back but no guarantees it's just based on the shuttle script and i haven't tweaked it much okay run scram sp uh, scram spike Entry, and we want to turn off the atmospheric autopilot for now. This is about as heavy as the shuttle normally is coming down, maybe a little bit lighter. Oh, I should allow it to use an engine. There we go. All right.
That probably delayed it a little bit. 126 meters per second left. Okay, we are in the atmosphere. It has a proper sort of orientation. But yeah, we'll probably need to tweak the numbers. It shouldn't start out with the relative altitude and longitude different. Okay, we are at 100 kilometers. No serious problems right now. It's doing some minor S-turns. I don't know if it needs to. We'll find out. Well, it's wiggling around quite a bit more here. And taking up some of the fuel. Uh, well, we seem to be a long ways off from Cape Canaveral, to be honest. So, I don't know if it's working out quite right. We'll see. Yeah, I think we're going to... Uh, if we're lucky, end up landing on the Yucatan Peninsula. At least we have that. But we'll have to make adjustments to get to Florida again. And we do have enough fuel to come back down, so... With this, with the modifications I've made, and making sure I can get to Mach 11 with the scramjet, we can get to the ISS orbit and come back. And it's no longer the case that the scramjet is useless. Uh, it does provide a benefit that exceeds the drawback of its mass. Well, it's having increasing yaw issues because the rudders are still in the shadow of the body. And the RCS might not be strong enough eventually. We'll see. It has to pitch down so that we can use the rudders. Okay, I'm going to... Ah, I keep doing that. I'm going to take control and pitch down for it. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to go crazy. Okay, we are subsonic and coming down. We are currently over the Yucatan Peninsula, as expected. Well, as expected after I found out how it was going. We can always use the air intakes as brakes, but I'll try to avoid doing that. Okay, landing gear down. Obviously, since we are lighter, our touchdown speed will be much lower than our takeoff speed. But I will not take many chances trying to figure out exactly how low we can go. 75 tons still. Okay, touchdown. Okay, so, whoa, oh, it's flopping on its tail. Uh, I keep moving the main gear back, but it seems like it's not enough still. Uh, on takeoff, of course, it's fine, but on landing, it is not. So, which is weird. I'll have, oh, well, but the air spikes are really heavy. And the cockpit is sort of integrated into the body mass. So, yeah. And actually, the center of mass on the jet ramjets is probably pretty far back, too. So, I guess. Anyway, it is back down, and we are here. So, I'm going to have to recalculate the stuff in the re-entry script. But, but we can sort of do the mission it's supposed to do. Uh, I don't know if scramjets can do what it does. Uh, hopefully they can do more because they're still cutting it sort of close as far as whether they're worthwhile or not. But then again, because they always seem to cut it close as far as whether they're worthwhile or not, that's probably why uh, it's been tough going as far as developing them, I guess. So anyway, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.